This morning we're here in uh, Russian River Valley with uh, John Vislay of uh, Vislay State Winery, right? Correct. And vineyards. Yes. So, John, tell me a little bit about how you got into growing and making all these different varieties that you have here. Well, it's um, it's a uh, it's a really kind of a, a fun story. My son and I, a couple years ago, um, decided that we wanted to get a little uh, little inventive and uh, strike out on a new venture and build a family brand. Uh, we were both in Chicago, and so um, I was ready to make a little lifestyle change and came out here and wanted to get into the, the wine business. And um, we just started looking and seeing what opportunities were out here. We found um, this, uh, our vineyard here, uh, which is 10 acres. Mm -hmm. um, we grow uh, essentially 12 different varietals. Right. Um, among them is uh, Petit Syrah which is uh, kind of turned into one of our personal favorites. Uh, mm -hmm. Just a, a fabulous wine, um, terrific grape, and um, yeah, it's just kind of like, uh, we just jumped in both feet. Uh, neither one of us had any wine experience. Um, we just knew that there was something that we wanted to, to, to try to do. So how do you jump in and get that wine experience to end up making the wine, and, and also knowing viticulture? I mean, did you take classes, or how did you do that? You know, um, we I read a lot of books, um, yeah. and and really, it was about talking to people. Um, you know, being in an ag agricultural community, um, there is just a ton of support. So when we, when I got here, I didn't have people, you know, wanting to keep me out. I was just uh, completely embraced by my uh, my neighbors, um, folks in the industry. Just were like, you know, volunteering if they needed, uh, if I needed help, just give them a call. Um, I, of course, I have a vineyard management company that. Um, um, does you know the the real heavy lifting so to mm -hmm. speak in the vineyard right um, but you know I spend time with them I spend time out here um, and you know slowly you know developing um, you know kind of a, an education along the way right so this was an established vineyard when the when vineyards you... 15 years old right and so that you inherit all these different grapes that are here yes yeah okay. it, we walked into essentially a turnkey operation mm -hmm. um, the vi vineyard very well established I was fortunate enough to taste a lot of the wines uh, that were uh, from this vineyard right um, you know and and we could kind of tell that um, you know based on the wines and talking to you know even just talking to people before we made the commitment um, that this was a terrific area to grow grapes right and um, so you know being Russian River um, was was a huge plus for us. It was something that we wanted, you know, as we embarked on finding a property, we wanted something with uh, some cachet like Russian River. Right, right. So we're here, uh, it's about mid-August, and we're here in a Petit Syrah area of, of your vineyard. Yep. And I see that some of the Verasion has started to take place here. Yeah, we're uh, we're probably 90% through Verasion. Mm -hmm. um, for the Petit Syrah, each varietal is going to have its own timetable. Right. And, um, you know, Verasion is, um, I mean, literally it, it is this the beginning of ripening. Right. So that's, um, uh, there's there's now the the grapes, and you can see they, they, they are going to begin to change from green to, to red, and eventually these will become um, a nice dark, uh, almost purple. And um, what's going on in the, in the grape itself? Um, the early part of the growing is um, the development of the acids. Um, you've got primarily malic and tartaric acids. Um, now what's going to happen is as these grapes ripen, now the vines are going to start to deposit sugars. And on a daily, daily basis, um, these will begin to ripen and um, we'll see the sugars you know, continue to rise on, on almost a daily basis. Right. And that's a direct result of the photosynthesis and, um, and, and the plant literally depositing, um, you, you know, they, they call it a sink. You know, the, these, these, these grape clusters are sinks. And, you know, the, the, the vines are just, they're collecting all this energy and they're depositing sugars into the berries themselves. And so you'll see that the um, uh, tartaric acid will begin to, to build, um, uh, or actually has, has kind of built now and now uh, that the acids are kind of where, where they're probably going to end up. Mm -hmm. um, now, it's, now it's time for the sugars to become the star of the show, so to speak. Got it. You know, um, Petit Syrah can make this rich, opulent wine, uh, but not without a lot of uh, advanced um, work to, to get it right, because bunch rot can be an issue. As oh, it's a huge issue. Because I'm looking at these clusters here, and they're so tightly wound together. 
Right. So how do you how do you manage that in the vineyard? Um, you you start very early. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with at, at bud break. I mean, okay. you know, we 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 have to go in and um, and essentially try to to put a. Um, you know, we'll go through and we'll spray uh, for the, the for the you know the, the fungicide, and hopefully get that in there and kill that stuff um, before it has a chance to really. Um, and when I say that stuff, I'm talking about any uh, mold spores. Mm -hmm. um, and as you said, the the clusters are very tightly together, uh, formed together, and uh, we'll go through and we'll we'll pull leaves, um, we'll uh, do what do what we need to do to try to place the fruit so that there's. Um, Nice uh, circulation of air through the through the vines, mm -hmm. um, adequate sunshine, um, you know. So th all the things that we can do to help prevent that that uh, that mold pressure from building. Okay. Um, you know, and mold is um, it, it's like us in a lot of ways, and in, in in the way that um, you know we like things a certain temperature and we like things a, a certain humidity, and um, and those are the things that we kind of monitor uh, through the growing season is. Okay, is is the environment right for that that mold to grow? Right. And um, you know, and and, it, and, and the temperatures um, are a huge factor in that. Mm -hmm. So you have you said uh, twelve varietals in the property. Yeah. Can you list them step by step by step, and also kind of associate them with how you're using them in wine making? Sure. Are you blending some of them, or are they all single varietals that you're using for for wine right. making? But how does that work? Well, um, for instance, we have two clones of Chardonnay. Um, I've got a French Dijon 809, and I have a California clone uh, Mount Eden, um, and I do blend those together when, when we make our Chardonnays. Although um, I may pull a couple of barrels and just do a single varietal, just as a special project. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that, we have all five of the Bordeaux varietals. So I've got uh, Cabernet and Merlot, Malbec, Petit Verdot, and Cab Franc, mm -hmm. and we do uh, historically those have all been blended together um, into a Bordeaux style blend. Exactly, yeah. and. Um, from there, we've got uh, the only Prosecco grown in this region. Mm -hmm. uh, we do make a sparkling wine out of it, and we do it in the traditional uh, method. And um, then beyond that, we've got Zinfandel. This area is terrific for Zinfandel and Petit Syrah, uh, almost legendary, I'd say. And, um, and then we have Pinot Noir as well. Okay. And uh, just to top it off for fun, <laughs> there's a little half row of Alicante Boucher. Okay, for a little spice there. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> right. um, yeah, and, and that um, has always traditionally been blended in. Um, although uh, last year I decided uh, let's try a little single varietal, so um, we'll see. It, it, again, that'll be a little special project that we'll we'll pull off. And you know, all of all of the wines, uh, whether it's a Malbec or a Petit Verdot, um, we don't field blend those. We keep them all separate. We mm -hmm. we process them separately, right. uh, ferment them, store them separately up until the time comes that we make the decision: is this an exceptional barrel of wine? that we want to hold out, mm -hmm. or do we go ahead and make an exceptional blend? Okay. Lastly, I want to ask you, while we're standing here in the vineyard, what does Russian River Valley bring to the table for you? I mean, you've done this for a few years now. Tell us about Russian River Valley and, you know, is it the soil, the climate? I mean, I'm sure it all comes together, but how, how would you say to someone that's never experienced Russian River Valley uh, fruit, what does it bring to the table? Well. The Russian River AVA um, actually is fairly large, mm -hmm. um, with a lot of small uh, microclimates. Right. And um, and even us, our our microclimate isn't the traditional Russian River in the sense of, um, you know, close to the river with you know lots of coastal influences, um, fog and so forth, uh, cool mornings. Mm -hmm. um, we get those, but we also since we're at the northern end. Okay. Um, you know, here where we're standing, um, we're with just the stone's throw of uh, Dry Creek, Alexander Valley, Chalk Hill. Mm -hmm. We're pretty much at the confluence, uh, if I can use that word, of, of all those different uh, AVAs coming together. Right. Um, and we're slightly higher in our elevation here. Um, so that's why we have this unique ability to grow Pinot Noir and, uh, and Cabernet in the same vineyard. Right. And, and have them both get ripe and both be happy. Mm -hmm. um, it's just cool enough to take care of the Pinot, and it's warm enough to take care of that, that cab. Um, because they, they are different varietals, and they do respond differently. And the other thing is that even our soils here, uh, within my 10 acres, I've got a couple different soil types. Mm -hmm. So um, at the other end of the vineyard, um, it's much more um, uh, clayish, and uh, at this end, it's much rockier. 
Mm -hmm. um, so that's another reason why we can grow those different varietals. And, and they're planted specifically uh, for that reason. Okay, wonderful. Let's go taste some wine. All right.